Welcome to another episode of Lifestyle After Five. We are delighted to have you and to hear you for another Wednesday. So there has been a lot of questions out there with a lot of change that is going on. And so today I have the pleasure of introducing one of the smartest men I've ever met as he introduced us to futurism. I had never heard of this topic, futurism. So you guys are in for the treat. So today, joining us to talk about exploring futurism, unveiling tomorrow's world with Richard Bronkowski. <laughs> Welcome to Lifestyle After Five, Richard. It is a pleasure to have you in what is going to be the start of a series. So are you, you in for a treat. So after today, you get to get us for what, another 29 episodes or whatever. Well, he's going to really go through what futurism is, talk about the changes of tomorrow. And, and what I really love about it that I didn't think about beforehand was I want to quote you. You said people of color will be in the future. And it's something that really got my mind to thinking and pushed us. How you doing this yes. morning? Actually, uh, yeah, thank you. I, again, it's my honor to be here. It was um, in futurism training. You know, I had uh, taken um, some additional courses after a uh, kind of a, a pushed career switch, you know, from COVID. Uh, but I was already on track on picking up a, a lot of information uh, kind of about futurism on some of the uh, consultancy and, and uh, projects that I was working on. And in uh, Futurism uh, 101, uh, Afrofuturism is a very big part of it. Um, and uh, it, as I continue to expand, uh, continue to work on it, continue to you know, uh, talk with people who um, are doing things with, you know, with Futurism, a lot of the feedback I would get back, uh, I'm sorry, Afrofuturism, uh, would be uh, kind of this uncomfortable aspect of the subject of black people in the future. And it used to always surprise me, you know, so uh, it is very deep, you know, in, in there, uh, you know, um, I, I don't find it an uncomfortable conversation to talk about black people in the future. You know, <laughs> it's uh, you know, kind of a no brainer, but it also kind of made me again, the, you know, reflect, self reflect and kind of see where, you know, how and where this is all going and then you know, how I could use this as a, uh, you know, kind of a tool, you know, to, you know, to continue. I want to ask Please. you a question. So you mentioned futurism one on one. So is this something that you could take at a is a college course or something that you know that's created by consultants or what what, what uh, or what have you of any of those sorts? Yeah. Uh, so there are like organized you know futurism groups companies uh, you know that um, do offer it. Uh, when it comes to uh, strategic forecasting, kind of as a mm -hmm. certification. Uh, then also Coursera, one of the, um, you know, kind of more available uh, um, uh, pro uh, programs that are out there for educational programs, also uh, offers it. Um, and so it's out there. All you have to do is, you know, kind of a quick find. And if not, I could always, you know, point a direction. But I personally took oh, the Coursera yeah. course. Oh, but it's not anything that's taught. Uh, you wouldn't find it in a college course, for, for have you, or in regular education. Unfortunately, no. And, um, you know, and I think that there's a message in there as well. Uh, so uh, there are, you know, some um, higher level uh, courses that do go into strategic think you know, thinking and, and its association. But when it comes to like futurism and kind of putting it all together, mm -hmm. you know, I no, I don't see it. In fact, it's not taught in most universities. And because of that, it's also not kind of recognized by, you know, people who graduate, mm -hmm. you, know, co you know, colleges and universities and groups. They don't know it, never seen it. They don't uh, uh, kind of apply it into their businesses, which, again, is a, is a big shame. So that's a kind of another reason why, uh, you know, kind of we're out here kind of you know, pushing that. Now, would some may argue, would it be the same as diversity? It would be uh, if futurism was a, as a wheel, diversity is a spoke in that wheel. Uh, but I okay. couldn't see it. Yeah, but I don't see it, you know, as in like uh, 
uh, as I understand how diversity classes and, you know, and and because I go to quite a few of them, uh, it it doesn't go long enough. There's no, um, I never see anything that has a long game. You know, futurism, there's a long game, Mm -hmm. right, to plan. Uh, Most of the diversity stuff that I know now or have seen now, it's more now, right, and stays Mm -hmm. in, you know, in now. And now needs help. You know, now is a good place for it. But like everything, there has to be, you know, it should be a longer plan. So as I noticed, um, and and again, keeping in with the, again, Black people in the future and uh, kind of the, the, uh, you know, diversity, I had quickly found, I think like a lot of us, other, you know, the current biases and things like in artificial intelligence and, you know, uh, uh, let's just say other strategic, you know, uh, uh, planning that's, you know, either, you know, buried in or not even considered. And um, it's, it's got to be fixed. It's got to be out there. And I don't focus strictly on Afrofuturism and stuff because obviously it's a spoke, right? There's a big wheel. Mm-hmm. So uh, Sino-Futurism or Pan-Asian Futurism, I think is also very important. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I you know, got to keep it real and, you know, kind of keep it to whoever's in, uh, you know, who's listening. Well, y'all heard it here. So that's the point of this series. We're going to tackle a lot of Big questions, ethical dilemmas, and fascinating possibilities that lie ahead in just watching this series. Now, Rich is breaking down each of these topics. And of course, uh, there's something that I wanted to bring up too, is um, how you said in our conversation recently about how the lingo matters. And you saying too, that there's no classes for this, no no traditional class work where you can go and learn futurism just as an easy, straight, narrow path, you know, you kind of have to do self-research. So um, that being said, uh, is there a particular way that someone can learn the lingo who's watching this series or should we uh, just kind of pay attention to how you speak and how you do your thing whenever these future episodes come into play? Yeah. Well, there's definitely, um, I guess it's a little of both, and you know, uh, first to mention, there is not the reason that there's not going to be a kind of organized class or not many of them in any kind of either higher education or even secondary education is because it moves too fast. By the time you even wrote half of this stuff down, it's obsolete, right? So yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's very common for uh, you know, even like with computer languages, right? I have a computer background, computer language background. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I had quickly learned that everything I was learning is not going to be used. I mean, they purposely even said it. So I wasn't even sure why I was even there. And um, so it, that was really the first time I started, you know, kind of looking outside organized education to learn what I need to learn to get a job and to kind of do things. So, uh, no, so, there, that, that, you know, I don't blame a lot of, uh, again, educational places and, you know, or that, but uh, the, the to have a framework, to have some type of language, to have and also some basic understanding of the framework of those languages mm-hmm. um, is important, not out there. And, you know, um, you know, really, you're the first people that I have seen that really you know, are, are pushing this. And it's, an, it's again, it's incredibly important. Right? It'll um, hopefully one clarify a lot of uh, issues that are going on, you know, with these trends and signals, but, you know, and, and it's my hope. And again, it's really hope of futurism that it also inspires people to kind of continue to look through it, to go that next level, to peel the onion, and really kind of you know, look, you know, look, look down. So, um, um, yeah, so it, it's your own people will only get this information from media sources like yourself because it's just you know that no one else is either finding it a important and what i have found in the field is that there's an aspect of embarrassment almost like they should know yeah. these words or they didn't know or you know it should have been incorporated in my life all this time and now here i am you know learning about it for the first time so that's why you got to be cool about it you know kind of chill about it or more most likely have fun right. about it you know so i can kind of that next place this is a safe because, space uh, y'all this is this for the futurist <laughs> better late than never right yeah now there's one other thing oh, yeah, about yeah. futurism i want to kind of bring 
bring up that it's important to kind of get up straight and is that I'm wrong, right? So most of the stuff that I'm going to be forecasting and moving, you know, again, pushing the needle in most people's mind, they're all looking to get to there, right? Whenever there is, right? So, but we're, you know, I'm not, I'm not psychic, right? This is not a kind of a game and kind of all that. But what you're doing is you're using these, hopefully we'll address future one, you know, futurism 101 to show the tools and the methodology that we'll all be using to get there. And yes, probably sir. like everything else in life that no one realizes, especially in these days, is that once we have a plan, once we have a direction, once we're all working off the same map, right, then it'll be easy to course correct, right? Something's going to change. You know, there's a, a, a lot of influences that are kind of going on. And, you know, don't, we won't stay on that path if it's the wrong path, but we will course correct. We're going to be a lot further than most people. You know, we will be first, most likely, in some kind of, you know, aspects. But again, just don't, you know, note that I, you know, some forecasts and stuff that we'll be able to do today, you know, may not be 100% correct in, in the future. Wow, that that that's that's very important. Right. Most, most people are rigid and they're not flexible and they're not used to adapting to change from what I understand from what what I've seen and this is why it is so important that you follow us as we go through this series. This is not a one and done thing where we just come to you and just drop all this knowledge and keys in one episode. We we had to break this thing down into 29 episodes and then there may possibly be more after that as this is growing and we're learning right along with you because there's a lot of change going on in our world i mean the money that we use from cryptocurrency down to the technology that we use ai is coming in the threat of losing your jobs and everything and rich as we go through these series is going to be able to discuss and break down a lot of this stuff to enhance your understanding so you can make better decisions for your future. That's why it's called futurism. So it's gonna I'm be lit. definitely, yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward and I'm excited <laughs> right. myself as we go forward. Uh, anything you, you, you're passionate about, you're extremely passionate about as we go forward in these series, uh, Rich? Well, me personally, um, you know, since birth, if not, you know, maybe a little bit past birth because, you know, again, you don't have language cap capabilities when you're mm -hmm. a baby and stuff like that. But it is the, um, you know, the future, you know, business of science fiction, right? Or just by itself, mm -hmm. science fiction. I have been always a science fiction fan, uh, you know, mostly around Star Trek. Again, I'm, uh, you know, I hold a personal, you know, doctorate what in it. <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> yeah. I cannot do that. <laughs> all, all the yeah. Star Trek, the Trekkies know. Trekkies, yeah, yeah, not the spot. It's a, you know, it's such a great, um, you know, greeting, you know, or I guess, and also it's, uh, you know, um, a salutation to, uh, you know, to, you know, it's like live long and prosper is very similar to aloha, right? So you can kind of, right. you know, it's both hello and goodbye, you know, it's, you know, kind of, you know, works in there, but. Um, you know, uh, I think it, it's easy to say it's again, it's a, uh, you know, a cornerstone, you know, at least definitely to, you know, Star Trek and the other one. But I don't think a lot of people even break that down, you know, don't even really, you know, realize what it means or it kind of says, you know, kind of obviously the live long part. Right. But uh, I mean, again, there's a ask, you know, there's, you know, not live long and be sick the whole time. Right. It's right along you know it's 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 a desire it's again a wish and a, and a blessing to go you know into a much you know again further in your life and then and to prosper right like it's not uh you know work hard not you know sit, sit around not anything but just um like have everything that you're doing in, in your life work out right is that you know mm -hmm. so it may, may again sometimes it might be obvious you know to when you're kind of listening but i don't think how like really how deep that is you know like and at least and definitely not something that people are saying to each other every day you know there's a, you know, there's a hello goodbye there's a this or that right. you know but you know i hope you live a long time healthy you know with all your family and you know and, and you know not you know uh 
broke or not lost or not something. And while that goes on, you know, prospering is never is not a, you know, one time. It just kind of continues. Right. It's so a there's an aspect of I think of futurism in that alone. It's just that you know, yeah. again, I wish the, you know, the greatest of you know of all of us. Well, Rich, uh, I kind of have a question, and because uh, I know we're gonna, we're going to get into language as we go through these series. So I don't know how true it is, and have you heard heard about it? I make it a habit. I never say good morning to anyone. I always say good day. Now I've heard that morning is associated with the morning as in death, even though they're spelled differently. The same root words are. There's an association to morning there. Have you done any studies in that area? Uh, know anything about what I'm referring to? I've never thought of it until now um, and that you brought it up and I appreciate it because again, it gave me another perspective that I never had before, which is all we want. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have not, you know, I, I do definitely do a lot of, you know, language and language breakdown and um, kind of where it comes from, you know, what, it, you know, kind of what it meant. I'm not getting immediately. My first reflex isn't the, the play on words, you know, kind of good morning, good morning. But it could be something, up, you know, again, a program somebody let, you know, put in, uh, you know, 500 years ago that we're still, you know, uh, you know uh, moving forward with. What I do know is that there's power in words, right? Both oh, in oh, the kind of current, right. No, that, that's the, I guess if I was going to put something together with that, I don't think of it as very negative. Again, I try to be positive, but, it, um, you know, again, I don't know everything, right? So, um, you know, what I would do, again, as a futurist would be apply my, you know, some, most of my methodologies behind that, right? So again, it, it, you could use that for AI and you can kind of use that, you know, kind of for, you know, for everywhere. So I would yeah. look back to look forward, right? So I try to find where that came from, you know, there's an, I guess there's an obvious, right? Good, good morning, you know, again, uh, it's the beginning of your day, you know, there's some kind of, right. we also, like, you know, we also like to kind of, you know, um, separate our days, right? Mo you know, morning, evening and stuff, you know, for that. And um, I know it's an old English word, you know, mm -hmm. used to sound like Morgan, good Morgan, but um, mm -hmm. I'll have to, uh, you know, kind of look back a, a, a little, for, you know, kind of further. And, and then I would also try to see who, you know, what else is out there, you know, that's being used or has been used and make a correlation to see, you know, if, if they're together. But I would like to expand on that, you know, a, a little bit more, you know, again, in, uh, in future episodes. Yeah, we don't have to do an etymology episode, man. That would be fire for real. <laughs> yeah. You know, people I don't mean, realize there's a lot of words. No, most people don't. Um, and, uh, you know, there is a, um, you know, both, uh, you know, an obvious connection to, you know, two words and how they're used about how people see you, right? And, you know, and, and you know, value you once you're kind of out there using words, you know, either, you know, professional, not professional, you know, again, uh, you know, slang, not slang. And that, you know, obviously puts a, um, you know, puts you in a, uh, a pool right away, depending on there. But the other part is that you hear those words, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, um, there is a lot of some research that I have done around um, because there is a strong spoke of futurism is brain physiology, right, and psychology, right? And so, um, you know, if we keep repeating these you know, types of words, if we keep using these kind of words, we start believing in them, right? And they become part of our own program. So that's why you have to, uh, you know, um, monitor, you know, there's a big push toward that, for this for, you know, um, now and hopefully in, in a, you know, in the future. Again, the words we use, we, we, we have a strong internal dialogue, right? Most of the people that we have to watch out for are ourselves, right? I can't do this or that. Or it's against me, you know. There, you know, and mm -hmm. I don't have the right family. Yeah. I don't, you know, this, you know, all of yeah, that. Self-limiting you know. beliefs. Yeah, there is that is a constant conversation that goes on in your brain, right? And then again, you keep going there. You keep programming it and stuff. So, learning to how to talk to yourself, and again, in a very positive, you know, positive way, or at least not a negative way. <laughs> will go far, 
you know, in, you know, in that. So, um, you know, that that'll definitely be, you know, that'll come up several times, I'm sure, you know, in there about, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, talking about the man and the woman in the mirror. You know, we're, we're almost our own worst enemies. You know, we don't have to worry about other people uh, like getting in our way. Well, like you said, uh, science fiction inspired you. And I'm just thinking, I've been thinking about that the whole time while you're talking about this. And I'm just like, yeah, I can see how uh, how that can get one looking towards the future. But now that you're, you know, I guess an adult in terms of age or whatever construct. But um, seeing as how that's like making you make life decisions now and helping different businesses out. Uh, there's different things that we will be diving into, obviously, in this series. But I just wanted to um, thank you first for having this conversation with us because it's important that we are having these conversations. Um, it's the reason why we were even inspired to do this series with you. So I do want to thank you, Rich, for just having a conversation because that's where the expansion starts. You know, a lot of people, like you said, uh, have that fear like uh, you should already know this or this is how you should be mixed into this already. What are you doing? But um, I do want this to be a safe a safe place for our watchers and listeners and also um, a way for us to combat those different things that people might think are, uh, I guess, taboo in the yeah. future. <laughs> taboo or radical. Yeah, exactly. So fortunately, uh, we have somebody here like Rich who, who's going to make this process a lot easier for us to get our point across. But um, another thing I wanted to bring up was uh, another theme that we're probably going to have extensive episodes on is uh artificial intelligence because uh one of one part of our series is the role of technology in our everyday life and i know uh, me and you talked about ai agents recently and i just wanted you to kind of go over how you think that artificial will impact uh, the different industries and our day-to-day -day life yes great so the first uh, point that I usually like to get out and make sure is um, congealed in everyone's brain as we continue to talk about, you know, AI, you know, today, tomorrow, you know, and, and you know, hopefully 10 years, is that um, it's just to kind of clarify um, what it is, right? Uh, you know, we've all been using AI or AI has been using us for, you know, for almost a decade now, a lot of people don't realize it. And again, a lot of it has to do with the, again, algorithms and different, you know, parts in media and in e-commerce and things like that, that right. have been, you know, kind of going on. Other decision-making tools have been out there also kind of influencing, you know, you know certain aspects of, you know, pol politics and um, gaming and any number of things there. So the first thing I like to get out first with AI, and this come this is the perfect way way I think we should start the um, you know getting the terminologies and thing kind of straight you know moving forward, is that you know uh, the connection or at least the clarification of AI versus GAI, which is the generative AI, which is what you know in the last like say you know three years have really exploded uh, when it comes to ChatGPT and you know, and, uh, you know, Claude and, and kind of a few other ones, um, is that AI is going to take information, variables and such, run it through, you know, it's, um, you know, they're all a little different stuff, but run it through its kind of internal cognitive processes and then come back with an answer, right? AI right. will always give you the same answer if you always give it the same variables in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. So again, five, you know, plus five is 10, right? You can ask AI that question a million times, it's going to give you 10 for an answer, right? right? Now, generative AI, right? It's the stuff that you've been seeing again with the dolly, you know, all the pictures and all the, you know, uh, the writing and kind of all, you know, creative aspects, I guess, if you want to talk about AI, will never give you the same answer twice, right? So if you ask for a picture of a blue cat sitting on a red car, it'll give that to you most amazingly, probably. And then, but if you put that in again, I want the same words, the same thing. I want a blue cat and a red car. It'll give you a completely different picture. By design, it doesn't know any different. It's not that smart. You know, all it knows is its program and how it was taught. 
And what makes the latter version of GAI really kind of, you know, stunning is the fact that they added another variable to it, which was make the picture or make this, you know, write the poem or, you know, whatever it is, write the term paper, but make it that based on your learning, what a human would, would find attractive or like you know, or pleasing is the actual word that they use. So it kind of goes in and finds, and you know, again, all the other pleasing, you know, you know, cats on cars, adjusts and mitten and does it. So there's, so that's the two best ways to think about how AI is going to work and kind of how GAI works and any of the kind of future AI, right? As I mentioned, you know, I am a, not particularly an expert, but there aren't that many others of XAI which is explainable artificial intelligence. So like right now, most of the systems can't tell you why it made that decision, right? And that in the, in the kind of industry, you know, we call that a black box. You can't see in it, right? We know information kind of goes in and information kind of comes out, you know, thank you. But AI needs to develop a line of trust for us to do anything else in the future with it, right? So XAI, which then leads us to a glass box is that we can see inside, we can understand and we can cue why it made those decisions. So we can learn from it and we could trust it, right? Trust is not given, right? It's earned regardless yeah. of who it is. If it's a computer, if it's your dog, if it's your girlfriend, you know, kind of whatever. XAI is actually in use today, and it is uh, mostly used within the medical and the financial world. It's built different. You can't just kind of you can add a component to it to you know old AI, but it's it'll make it too long. It's too long in processing. But when it's done like correctly in the beginning, it, it's actually you know works very well. And you know, so then we can uh, so. I'm not sure if we should deviate, but I wanted to kind of give an example of what, how mm -hmm. like a well-trained AI could be used and why we would trust it later on. Go ahead, bro. You want to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of the main, this is, again, this should just kind of clarify the difference of AI, GAI, and all the other ones. So right now, and as I mentioned, medical, we use AI for diagnoses, right? And the um, most common one was for breast cancer. It's the one that kind of comes up the most. It's the one that's the most, uh, you know, successful, you know, as of lately. And there's even an emergence property out of it, which is, uh, again, I think so fascinating and something we should all be keeping out for when we're looking at futurisms um, is that, you know, other things will kind of be starting to come out of here. And so yeah. we basically, and I won't go into the whole how we train AI and all that, but we've shown AI a bunch of pictures we have decades of breast cancer x-rays, MRIs, anything like that, right? And we say, go and find, you know, when these kind of pixels look a little dark or look a little, you know, mis malformed or don't look normal or don't look anything like that and recognize it as, you know, as cancer. And then, you know, it will go through all of its learning, all these, again, almost decades of history and then have a sense of, okay, when I see something different here or here or here, you know, again, regardless of how big or how small it is, I will recognize that as, you know, X and X here is cancer, right? So right. it's even found, you know, well, it's actually used as a secondary right now uh, backup to most of the uh, oncology and evaluations just to make sure it doesn't basically doesn't miss anything like well we don't miss anything right but the emergent property out of it right was is it even more amazing is that it knew it had so much information it has so much information it has you know learned so much that in in those pictures that it actually been is that has been able to find pre cancerous cells so even you know or a commonality to that so it's not a question that it was even asked, you know, because we asked it to find these things. But it actually came back and said, I can tell that based on, you know, again, my history, the people who have these kind of components, it looks like this, it, you know, whatever it is like this, 
usually turn out to have cancer. So it's now doing like deeper diagnoses, right? And we can add that into so much other part of medical and, you know, financial and all that kind of stuff. But again, the trust has to, you know, come there. Why are you yeah. making this decision? Why should I cut off this person's leg or breast or kind of something like that? And they would say, because of this. And then you save a life, you love it. And, you know, you know year by year and stuff like that, we'll all start to have a better, you know, uh, uh, trust levels for AI, which then allow us to do other things in our life. That's awesome. Lives. I love how you put that together, bro. I do. <laughs> Well, what you said, Rich, I think this is a very critical, important time for people of color to get into futurism, into AI, because like you mentioned in the beginning, there are biases. So I argue, how can one that don't experience, like you asked some people, some people don't believe there's racism in the United States or that their that the biases exist as humans. They don't see it. So how yeah. can they train AI or a computer to determine and see biases? So unless we have people of color in their training and working with these AIs, AI is never going to recognize, well, maybe it can get deep, deeper learning, but I don't understand how it will ever get to the point of recognizing and solving some of these biases. Right if you don't have the people that are experiencing these biases involved in the system. And it's very critical when you got places like, I believe it's San Francisco, somewhere in California where they actually got AI cops, robot cops or dogs or whatever. They got uh, dogs that are AI generated. And as we got, and as you alluded to before, and as we will talk about in, in some of the future uh, series, smart cities. Yeah. So, can you give your opinion on that, the smart cities and the biases, you know, and, and what I just stated about people of color no. getting involved in AI? Right. So the first, um, and, and this is something that you mentioned before when it came to diversity, and this is why I think, you know, this is some parts of what, why diversity is so important kind of across the board, right? Kind of versus... Mm -hmm. I guess what everyone has been thinking about, what what it is now, and you know the you know, de you know DEI is under huge huge um, pressure. In fact, even being removed from a lot of the mm -hmm. you know, it's a trend that I see now about you know, really being removed from a lot of the woke companies that have incorporated that in and you know and, and kind of getting and now getting you know pushed out. Um, I, we can go into that for another term, you know, another time, but about why it's being pushed out and actually how to save it to get it back in. But the, uh, right. you know, kind of easy example about the biases is uh, the, you know, um, uh, self-driving cars is the first kind of like really the example most people you know use when it comes to trying to uh, help people understand why the biases are there. And, and again, how do we fix it? So self-driving cars needed uh, have a uh, decision-making process that they would they do all the time and this isn't recent i think they kind of you know let's just say clean this up or edit it in but earlier on uh when a self-driving car had to make a decision about running someone over it tended it, its tendency was always to run over the black people right and again that's not something that wasn't a program that wasn't put in you know like it, there, there isn't anything that says you know, when you're making a choice between a you know a white lady and a black lady, run over the you know, it that's one of those that kind of emergent things that kind of came in. Everyone who programmed that AI was a white person, most likely. You know, most likely from a highly you know, uh, you know whatever working in some big tech company and all that. And there's probably not a lot of black, black people or you know um, people with any color really in, you know working there. So, it it down it it, it kind of had figured out on its own because of the much deeper deeper programming that's kind of been being put in there yeah. to make those types of decisions right so if there was a black person on the you know or several or at least had it review it or kind of something like that it would <laughs> probably yeah. make choices and things like that and then it would you know i don't know what it would do you know uh, in science fiction actually uh you know, actually addresses that, and and you know, again, and later on, 
and smart cities, especially like the stuff that they've been doing in China. China is very big, you know, smart city. And it also kind of makes these, you know, these types of decisions and things like that about who should get fined, who shouldn't, doesn't get fined, you know, who should we arrest and, you know, or any number of things like that will kind of keep in place. So that's a great, again, that self-driving decision-making thing was a kind of a really great example yeah. of why, mm -hmm. you know, that's all needed in there. Um, there was the, but again, we learned from that, right? And one of my key components to futurism is biometrics, right? And biometrics happen, mm -hmm. you know, are going on all the time, right? Right. Most one that most people understand are facial recognition, right? So there mm -hmm. are technology, a lot of it came out of Israel, which they're, you know, again, you know, because it was their need, right? Uh, but it's like, a, you know, again, they're really smart. And so they can kind of go out and say, you know, this person, that person, right? You know, the department stores started using that as well, right? And they kind of came in and they would know if you were a repeat, you know, um, you know, what you bought last time, what you did there. And, you know, kind of they yeah. use that for learning. But again, there's a built-in bias just because it's face, right? Just because it's face, it's color, right? Yeah. It's kind of how we do it, how our brain does it. I can right? see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So the response to that is to find ways to identify you without your face, without your body. You know, well, still you need your body because it's biometric. But any of the, you know, uh, let's just say any kind of like, kind of key you know, or point uh, differentiator that would make your face different than my face or this that face and that face. Right? So there is a movement, and I uh, hope and I will continue to push it and stuff like that for various other ways to do identification. And the one I find, there's two I find that really kind of, you know, float my boat. First is palm recognition, right. right? So there now there are technologies that you could just place your palm as unique as everything else in your body, right? But it won't know any of the other parts about, you know, my sex, my color, you know, my age, my anything, right? It's just going to know that it's that it's Richard, right? And it will allow me in or allow me out depending on it's on where I'm supposed to be. Right. So, but this right. way, there's no way for it to continue to learn and this, and it kind of completely removes race and age and all the other things come out of the learning system and it won't develop a bias. Right. So that's and the other one I love is gate analysis. Right. So gate analysis and they're, you know, they're adding this into, you know, a lot of buildings and things like that is, one of the things that another you can't copy the way somebody walks right that's also mm -hmm. a very okay. unique oh, really? okay what we, right how we move right how we walk how long our steps are this and that and ai can easily just kind of turn that into like a, a line you know i have some some examples if you ever want to see it uh like a video of it and it'll say okay this person is walking like lord lord is allowed in here open up the gate Right. And so, you know, again, it doesn't care, you know, who you are, what you are. It's just going to care about, you know, how how far your feet are together, you know, how, your pace, your all those other things. So I am very positive about where biometrics and other, you know, directions that technology is going that, you know, uh, immediately erase any of the other kind of biases when it comes to race and things like that already out. The other stuff will just fade out. Seems to me like uh, AI need to get it right and teach uh, teach the human race how to remove biases. Yeah, that would be nice. We've been for real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we haven't that figured that out yet. As humans, we haven't figured out how to remove biases. So it'd be awesome if AI could pick it up and learn it. <laughs> right. Amen. Yeah. There is. Um, again, we could. Um, we have you know, again uh, this is the royal we all of us right uh you mm -hmm. know depending on how old you are you have that many years of biases and programming that have been kind of going on from other sources that have been programming you most likely your family you know your church your friends your school your work your this you know that there's a lot of uh, you know long bias you know long bias programming in, in ourselves that uh, it's going to take more than ai i think to you know go on and uh, I, again, I'd like to bring in, you know, the more positive science fiction that has covered that subject, you know, 
and, and kind of including Yo. against, yeah, including Star Trek and kind of a few others, right? That, um, and again, I also think that has a, a personally, you know, again, a, a big influence on the way I grew up and everything like that. And, uh, you know, they kind of, you know, there are some science fictions that kind of take that where that's all gone, you know, that's all lost, you know, like race, race bigotry and things like that were just kind of stuff that you learn in a, in a history book, you know, right. as in kind of wrong, right? But to take it out to the point, you know, that, uh, again, this is that expansion, that and use of imagination and all that, right? What's it like when it's not a regular part of your life? I mean, racism, right? Like it doesn't, everyone's doing their job everyone's doing their thing everyone is you know is gaining some kind of you know um, everyone's learning from each other and then it's just not there like can people think that you know like can you get to that point where you you know I'm, i i try to figure out another way like something that we used to think about like you know i, I don't know like the greeks were very positive about there was a zeus and a this and a that right and, and you know poseidon but if it just became obvious or kind of things kind of moved on or got other influences and, you know, it's not there anymore. Right. We know it's not that right. You know, we read about it in some kind of book. My goal and everything that I do and everything like that is to, to get there. You know, it's like to the point. And again, that that's what bothers me about when I talk about that there are going to be blacks in the future and it makes people nervous. You know, like makes people like they you know weren't thinking about it. And again, not just like your every day, but even again as as in in, in corporations and things like that. They're developing yeah. products, they're developing, you know, again, medicines, they're developing them. Like, have you considered, you know, that there might be a black person, you know, black people might want to buy this. Is a black person even on your, you know, on your list of whoever you know does want to buy this? Did you take that into consideration yeah. when you were building this? Right. So um yeah, it makes people uncomfortable. I'm kind of glad about that because I'm, you know, we're clarifying it all. You know, again, they don't have to, but it, it is that. It is that. And when you take Afrofuturism into consideration, like, you know, again, the music, the art, you know, again, the the videos, the you know, you know, the books, you know, that that's in there. You know, that's already in there. That's already, you know, again, outside, you know, kind of, you know, the myopic ways that we're thinking today and and you know already in play and you know they're already celebrating their decisions and they're already kind of taking it you know to an exponential point and other things are going on love that love that that's again that's futurism right that's like kind of like oh i never thought of it that way or oh shit, of course i think futurism is very basic you know almost kind of common sense but as yeah. you know <laughs> when we watch the news or looking out your window yeah, exactly. or kind of something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, common sense. Uh, it's out there not somewhere. Coming not coming somewhere around. out there. <laughs> well, you, you bring up a good point when you say that they don't consider us in the future. But then, when you think we were never considered in the past, if you look into the psyche of a person of color, I remember as a child watching the Ten Commandments, asking my grandma, "Well, when did God create black people?" Because I didn't see any black people in the <laughs> Ten Commandments and any of the old movies. Or you start watching the westerns and everything else. I I was confused as a child, like, "Well, dang, when when, when did black people come on earth?" <laughs> <laughs> Did we just imaginally just, <laughs> just appear one day and, and change? So I can see why they don't consider us in the future because we were never considered in the past. But then I wonder, does that play a future play a, a role in our psyche when it comes to thinking about the future? And do we as colored people, do we even see ourselves in the future? Right. Like I said, when you brought up mm -hmm. the thing of futurism, I was like, oh. Stunned, and when you say, "Yeah, black people will be in the future," I just kind of like existed, and I I consider myself a bright person that plans ahead, but I just kind of like went along. And, and I think we just kind of we've gotten conditioned to the point where we don't plan our own future. We just, oh, they'll figure it out, and we'll just exist in it. <laughs> we'll exist in it exactly. Yeah, like, oh, they'll figure. Elon will get it, and he'll get to Mars, and then they'll start giving us. You know, once they build something, then 
we'll just jump along if they allow us and then we'll just go along. So this really opens up your mind to think and it really has opened up my psyche and the way I think about futurism. And this and maybe this is, um, you know, the uh, the prophecy that you mentioned about AI helping us, you know, or teaching mm -hmm. us. Right. So maybe as we become, you know, more dependent on AI and it's, you know, it's decision making processes and, and they're like pure or they're, you know, inclusive mm -hmm. or kind of something yeah. like that, that yeah. will kind of, you know, start going along, you know, with it. And uh, because, you know, it's right. We trust it. You know, it's kind of telling that, you know, it may, hope, you know, may show us a mirror one day, you know, why you make that decision or something like that. But, you know, I'm just hoping that it, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll be a good partner. Again, just AI is a partner. It's not going to be your overlord. It's not going to be your, you know, slave. It's going to be a partner. It, you know, it needs you. You need it. Yeah. But in today's climate, maybe is there a certain fear of that? Maybe that could be why certain books can't be read in, in school and, and banning the technology to try and stifle futurism. There's a, you know, there's a lot of it. And again, a lot of it comes from, uh, you know, a lot of it in the past, you know, that, 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 you know, influences our future. And again, you, with the use of imagination, with the use of, again, uh, some simple tools, you know, we can start chopping away at all that stuff. This conversation is super poetic, y'all. I just, I don't know. I'm over here, like just soaking all this up, but I did have a, a question for you too, Rich. Um, I know before you were talking about, me and you and Ali talked about how the future, when you think of it, is supposed to be a positive thing. So you kind of on that theme right now. So I kind of wanted to uh, ask you, is there any um, uh, science fiction books that you recommend or just books, any type of media that can help people get started? Since this is the intro of the series, what what is something good to get people started and understanding where we're going with this? Uh, specifically within like blacks or just kind of in general just in general but i mean if you have anything for uh black people too you know fire off bro. well yeah yeah i mean unfortunately i don't have it right now because you know I, I don't have it in front of me but i could tell mm -hmm. you i could share with you and you can share with your audience at least two or three really great black futurism uh, science fiction writers or just writers in general there are like cornerstones like I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. Uh, and there, and, and again, that that does an, an, an amazing job, you know, both in looking back and looking forward and kind of seeing where all that, go, you know, kind of goes from. Um, the, right, so as, as we were talking about, there's two things about futurism that if you're not doing, you know, if you're not doing, you're not doing it right. One, the fact that it has to be a positive, you know, an actionable plan, right? And the other one, it has to immediately involve community. It has to be a community aspect of it, right? And then, so uh, for the positive parts, what I, the main thing that I ask people, like in these kind of scenarios, and again, I will find details for you, but it's just to try to stay away from all dystopian science fiction or in dystopian stories. Yeah. <laughs> right? that's, I can see. That's what. That's what everyone's watching these days, right? I mean, and you know, there is a like Dune two, to... <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, you know, there's an you know, and again, it's part of it, it. There's an aspect of your brain that understands that, right? Like, also mm -hmm. media and news, right? There's a reason why they always show us all the bad news. You know, there's the reason why they show us all the you know, uh, yeah. you know bad people <laughs> or you know the rapes to this to that instead of like have you found a positive <laughs> yeah. news station? Right. There isn't one. Right. Like, no. So, um, so most media, uh, again, is dystopian and it is known in the psycho in psychology and in other places. Dystopia breeds dystopia. So if all we do is sit around and go to dystopian movies and watch dystopian television and read dystopian stories and listen and watch dystopian news. What else would you what else could you do, right? Like, you know, why? That's all you know. You know, that's all you, you know, you can't turn around, you know, anywhere without that, you know, kind of happening. And 
you, it's going to add to your program. It's going to add to your bias. It's going to add to your, you know. so my, you know, my mantra is, just, you know, stop watching dystopia or at least keep it down to a minimum, you know, or at right. least know now that, you know, now you have revelation that it's going to affect you and it's going to make you want to do more of it. You know, you will then have, a, a, you know, another filter that you can, you know, push that against. Okay. I can, understand it i can respect it it's kind of fun you know whatever but you know this can't be me i can't be thinking here right you know can't be do something it's like when an alcoholic figures out that they're an alcoholic right yeah you know, then they see it all you know they're like oh shit you know here's the 15 beers i had when i came home which i thought was normal right and like you know or kind of something like that right so you gotta yeah, you know for sure. And that's a great analogy that I never thought about because you do, you hear these people that complain like, you hear women that say, I can't never find a good man, but yet they're constantly talking about how I'm independent, how guys ain't no good, they're liars, they're cheaters, or you know, they're just yeah. doing things that's, they're, they're having conversations and doing things that's counterproductive to what they want to achieve. Yeah. And they're wondering, like, why why I keep getting no good people or negative people around me or lying people. And you're manifesting it. <laughs> you're in the midst of liars. And that's why you can't yeah. find nothing but liars. <laughs> but, yeah. like, I mean, that's awesome that you brought that up because I actually spend a lot of time these days, specifically in that because it's, a, it's some research that I have been working on for some time about the... Um, the current, um, uh, not the current differences between you know men, uh, men and women, but there's the a widening gap between how you know men and women are like now in dating, you know. But I think it, there's obviously a much larger, you know, kind of it's kind of across the board, you know, like you know we are in a kind of post-COVID society that you know there's an epidemic, uh, you know, of loneliness and all the other things that are kind of going on, you know, these days. And so I've been working on that. I've been using a lot of my futurism for a future article um, when it comes to, you know, again, um, you know, where men and women are, where they were, uh, like in the future. And um, divorce rates are something I pay attention to. And again, not just in the United States, but kind of around the world, right? Yeah. And then this whole dating thing. And, you know, what I have found, and again, I, you know, there's, I'm sure there might be more information, but, I, you know, I, I, I keep an open mind and all the other things while I'm doing this. And at least for the dating part, what I have seen, and also the feedback that's kind of coming back. So I, I know I'm, there's a filter and a, a bias that I'm hearing, but it was like the lie of feminism, right, is where I'm kind of getting mm -hmm. the dating issue, right? You were, they, women were told you can have it all, right? You can, you know, have your career, you can have children, you can have a, you know, mm -hmm. relationship, you can kind of, you know, do it, you know, do it there. And, and in some forms, they should allow, you know, kind of have it all. But, you know, maybe that's like a futurism, <laughs> future, you know, aspect of feminism. But what the realities are hitting the ground now, right? And yeah. the mm -hmm. other part, I think we all. The other part we all know and or maybe people don't know is that there is a consequence to your actions. Right. That's another thing. And again, I think that's a kind of oh, society not in today's thing. society. There's no no accountability yeah. in today's society. <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and again, someone open, else. Right. So futurism, again, it starts today and then kind of goes into the future. Right. So you have to look at today. And, you know, in, when it comes to that part of dating when it comes to all of that. And again, I, I could probably do a whole show on this, but I don't want to we say that they were lied to, but they didn't take everybody into consideration, right? Yeah. So like, it might've been good if the feminists kind of asked the men, you know, about how they felt about this or where it goes, instead of it being like they were but the they bad told men, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. And again, some people do. But there are kind of, again, again, other aspects to humanity, the kind of kind of human rules that we all kind of put into place that that went, that that bumps its head against that. And, you know, numbers, you know, how like if you think you're going, you know, if you're 
I, you know, I don't want to use a lot of like, uh, again, uh, I'm using this as an example, but if you're a 30 year old woman and again, you went to school and you kind of did everything, and, you know, as you were supposed to, and now you kind of come out and you realize that men don't want to date 30 year olds or, four, you know, kind of a 40 year olds because they're older, right? You know, uh, you know, um, men like younger women, you know, not a surprise, <laughs> like, Younger women have, again, that internal, there's this internal, you know, uh, program that we all have about wanting to have babies and moving on and moving our DNA mm -hmm. to the next generation and stuff like that, right? We're running up towards the, uh, up towards the hour and I don't want you to lose your final thoughts. So I just want any final words as we got about a minute and a half left that you want to share mm -hmm. where, where people can hear more about you. Well, uh, okay, yeah, a little bit more about me is that um, what um, I have about I have about twenty years of a marketing background. And this is like mm -hmm. pre-internet and post-internet, so all be on my website. So it's basically my my full name. So it's www.richardbukuski.com. It's uh, R I C H A R D B as in boy, U K O W S K I as in igloo. dot com. So it's my own personal brand. Uh, my website will have a kind of a breakdown of what futurism is, a breakdown of, of who I am, uh, constantly updated with new signals of the future. There's some information about my one-on-ones or workshops. And then I also have my videos and all my articles there too. Also, as you can check these episodes out on YouTube and now on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that way. Don't forget that you're on our Discord community where we will have conversation with R Richard and all the others. We just we are out of time. I thank you all for listening, and we'll check you out next Wednesday on WDJY 99.1 FM. Thank I'll you. See you in the future. Peace. <laughs> and to keep this interactive, please leave comments. If you got questions and keep this show going, please put them in the chat box below on YouTube if you're watching it from there. Just wanted to say that. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Be well. <laughs>